Well, hello there, my name's HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. I got an email earlier this week asking me, HW, what does the pick parameter do? And it's one we haven't talked about here on Tone Jiggy TV. Let me start by saying it does exactly what you would expect. It changes the sound of the pick attack. Now, it's one of those parameters that you don't normally find on a tube amp, and so you might think we've never had control over this parameter before, but aha, you would be wrong. Actually, you would have control over. You see, I use a very hard pick. I usually use like a 1.0 or a 1.14, sometimes a one and a quarter. I don't know how that happened. I just started liking hard picks. My buddy the Suze loves soft picks. It's one of the real secrets to his sound. Uh, you know, the Edge famously used very, very soft picks. And it changes the sound of the guitar. Uh, here I'm using a PD-100-1-2 profile. I put the little tube screamer on. And you can hear there in the intro, it, it's a pronounced pick attack. You can hear the pick hitting the string. It's not subtle. You can hear the attack. It's a firm attack. Um, let me defeat this tube screamer real quick and let's go into the amplifier section and let's find that pick parameter. It's right there on the first page. It's at zero right now. Let me increase it a healthy amount. I'm going to put it up here at like around three. It's at 3.4 and you're going to hear that pick attack increase. Actually, first let me play it for you with, almost, with the pick attack almost at zero. Now let me increase that pick attack to about 3.4. Now you might be going HW, that's like the same sound. It's Listen closely, I want you to really hear this. All right, check out this, I'm gonna play a little different riff here. Listen to the attack of the note and really you can almost perceive it as a slight increase in the clarity of the initial attack or the initial strike of the note. Here is, uh, this is a bright profile, so um, the attack is already fairly pronounced, okay? So let's try this. Let me, let me lower it, and uh, we're at negative 3.4, and now listen to this. Now let me bring it up to 3.14. Let's really exaggerate it so you can hear what it's doing. Now your ear might be telling you, wait a minute, this sounds a bit brighter. Did we brighten the profile? Does it brighten the profile? It really doesn't. I'm gonna tell you what I think is going on here. I have no proprietary information from Kemper on this. At really extreme settings, like if I go all the way up to five, it has a slight compressed ducking feel. Like, that's at the most extreme setting. I think what's happening is, I, I don't even know how this would be possible. They're somehow taking just the attack of the note and changing the volume on just that attack. And at these super high volumes, it almost feels like maybe there's a compressor grabbing that thing and then cutting it off super sharp because it has a sort of unnatural sound at the highest sort of setting. But pretty much everywhere else, I mean, even when it's still pretty high, at three, now it only goes up five and down to five, down negative five and five, so it's not a huge range. I mean, that's the entire range, but even at 3.4, it still sounds fairly natural to me. But it, it makes it sound brighter. Now, like I said, this is something we've had control over. It has to do with the hardness of your pick. You're gonna get more of a pick sound if you use a harder pick. Also, different tones can give you the perception of more of a pick sound. We're hearing what we might translate as a little bit of brightness, like I said. If you're using a lot of gain, you might try rolling up this pick parameter. It's very useful. I'll tell you the other thing I like using it for. I take a guitar like this, or a guitar that maybe isn't the most John mayer -y sound, and it can really turn it into a great sort of um, uh, fingery sound. Now I could do that with a lower pick attack and it would sound like this. I think one of the real attributes of a, of a finger picked strat sound like that 
um, is actually achieved by rolling up the pick attack. And this is something I just sort of discovered by playing around before this video going, hey, where do I like this thing? I was using my pick and I liked it one place and then I put the pick down and I started finding myself enjoying the pick parameter at higher volumes. Check this out. I mean, it's really interesting and it's one of those things where where's the right place to set it well there isn't really a right place to set it I'd say if you you might try this if you're trying to dial in a little bit of clarity to your sound like you feel like you have a little bit too much of a warm sound or it's a little too um, a little too woofy maybe you might increase that pick attack and you can get a little bit of pick dynamic back you know that's if you're looking for a warm sound you could always brighten the sound of course um, it's a really interesting parameter, and again, not one we've really had control over in the past. Uh, check them back in here. That's what the pick attack rolled up a bit. I'm going to try rolling that back again so you can hear what it does. Just takes off a little bit of the high end, a little bit of the pronouncedness. Is that a word? Pronouncedness of the sort of initial hit of the note, but the rest of the sound remains the same. It's really interesting. It's also really unique as I'm making my humbucker sound just a slight bit more single coily. I mean, not really, but just in the attack, it gives me back a really pronounced attack. It takes away some of the compression of the attack that the humbucker brings in. That's a unique feature. See, that's a little, that's reduced attack. Here's increased attack. Very interesting stuff, but again, in those in-between positions, increased sort of pick uh, dynamic really helps. Here's it backed off. Yeah, it's, it's subtle, but it's definitely there. I think with fingers, I prefer it higher. With my pick, I prefer it lower. Why would that be? Well, I'm already getting an amount of pick noise and pick sort of volume with my hard pick, and this is a hard one. If I had a softer pick, I might be getting less and I might enjoy it at a higher sound. I'll be honest with you, it's one of those parameters that I don't think breaks or makes your sound. Uh, it's one of those parameters that is great for fine dialing in, uh, kind of like the direct mix, which I'll talk about in the next video. Um, it's, I'm, you're, it's never gonna make a bad sound good, and it's never really gonna make a good sound bad. It's just really a fine detail. Start with a good profile. Find one you love. Find one that feels like an amp to you, that you enjoy playing on. Next, get into the definition control. Get into the clarity control, some of those amplifier parameters. Next, go through the EQ on the front. Next, uh, go into the cab section, maybe play with the high and low shift. Those are interesting parameters. These are really the fine tuning parameters that I mean, I don't, I don't know that you'd ever hear this in the mix, but sometimes gear is for the player. I have been HW. I hope this helped clear up a little bit of what this pick parameter does. It's, it's not a huge difference, even at extreme settings. You can kind of, you can tell something's happening, but you know, it doesn't make your Marshall sound like a clean Fender or something overnight. But it really does have a cool sort of tune. I'm HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. HW. <laughs> Thank you.